Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'd like to show you a very simple and extremely useful circuit that you can put together using a small number of electronic components. The circuit you see here on this breadboard is designed to cycle on and off 12 volt incandescent lights, high current LEDs or LED strip lights, make a continuous sounding alarm sound intermittently, or you can even cycle on and off small electric motors. Let's take a look at the circuit and then I'm going to go over the schematic with you and show you what to do if you'd like to make a few modifications. This circuit is built around a 555 timer. It's set up in an A-stable mode, meaning pulses are going to be outputted on pin number 3 of that timer. The 555 timer only has an output current of around 200 milliamps. If you go higher than that, you're going to burn up that integrated circuit and even if you operate very close to the 200 milliamps, it's still going to get hot. So what I did is I set this up a certain way to allow you to adjust the pulses on and off. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using this halogen lamp. The low beam side draws around 2.6 amps, and the high beam draws around 5 amps. So we're going to be using the 555 circuit to drive this MOSFET back here, which is going to allow you to control a much heavier load. This circuit is intended to be used for 12 volt applications, but that does not mean you cannot use this circuit with voltages as low as 3.5 volts all the way up to 16 volts with only a couple of small modifications. Before I demonstrate, I first would like to go over the schematic with you right over here. Here you see the 555 timer, the usual A stable setup. You have a 103 capacitor. 0.01 microfarad going between pin 1 and pin 5. Pin 1, this right here goes to ground. Number 2 is connected with pin 6. Then you have between pin 6 and ground, or pin 1, a 25 volt 47 microfarad. This is an electrolytic capacitor, and the delay of this circuit can be adjusted by either raising this value or lowering the value. If you like a shorter cycling, then you would lower the value. If you'd like it to cycle on and off much longer intervals, then you would increase this value. Over here between pin 6 and pin 7, instead of a fixed value, I have a 200K potentiometer, and that's going to allow you to regulate how long the light is off, or the motor that you're controlling, and how long it's on. With the setup you see here, it can be operated up to 10 seconds on and 10 seconds off. So if you set it for 3 seconds, it's going to cycle 3 seconds on, and then it's going to be off for 3 seconds. You can make it 5 seconds on and off for 5 seconds. If you'd like to have it set up for a time that you want, it's very easy. I'm going to place a link in the video description area to a 555 online A-stable calculator. You're going to enter the values, and it's going to tell you how long in milliseconds the circuit's going to remain on, and off. Over here between pin 7 and pin 4 I have a 4.7K quarter watt resistor. Pin 4 and 8 are tied together. Over here you have 12 volts that's to the positive rail and down here this is connected to the negative of the battery or the power supply. Now when I demonstrate I'm going to be varying the position of this potentiometer. We're going to flash it at a much faster rate and then I'm going to show you with the delay up to around 9 or 10 seconds. If you'd like to have something turned on for a full minute and then off for a full 30 seconds and then cycle back on again, one minute on and then 30 seconds off. Over here you would have a 200K resistor. This would be set at the 200K position for the potentiometer and this capacitor would be a 200 microfarad. If you'd like to have something on for 30 seconds and off for two minutes, what you would do is make this a 200 microfarad capacitor. The 200K pot, you would get rid of that and make this a 1K resistor. And up here, you would have a 200K potentiometer set for the highest position of 200,000 ohms. As I mentioned previously, the output on pin number 3 can only handle up to 200 milliamps. So to carry the heavy load, we're going to use a 200 ohm resistor right here quarter watt, really not necessary but I did add one. 
and we're going to connect it to the gate of an IRF Z44N MOSFET. It's an N-channel MOSFET. You can use other MOSFETs as long as they have a low RDS, and what that is, a low on resistance between the drain and the source. And you can also use one that's logic level, meaning very low voltage could be applied to that gate to fully turn it on. But the IRF Z44M works extremely well and it's very common. Now to ensure that your lights or motor switches on and off reliably, doesn't remain on partially, what you want to do is add this quarter watt, one mega ohm resistor between the gate of the MOSFET and the source. That's going to keep the gate pulled down when there's no voltage being applied on pin number three, allowing the circuit to fully turn off. And it's also going to keep that transistor from trying to slightly turn on when the voltage output starts on pin three. If you don't have that, it may start slightly dim the light and then go bright. But if you have this resistor, it's going to turn on fully and turn off fully. So right over here, you have the gate of the MOSFET. This is the source pin of the MOSFET. And over here is the drain. You're going to take your 12 volt supply, more than likely from a vehicle battery, connect that to your 12 volt lighting. And the other side of the 12 volt lighting is going to go into the drain so it flows through to the source and to battery negative. Anode of the LEDs on this side and cathode on this side. Now if you desire, you can have this circuit running as low as three and a half volts. You could take a lithium ion cell or a lithium polymer, just one cell, to operate the circuit and you can have it operate one of these one watt LEDs. But in order to do that, you're going to have to get rid of this one meg resistor and the MOSFET and you're going to use instead a transistor, an NPN transistor, 2N4401 or a BC547. You'll take the emitter from that transistor, connect it to battery negative. The base will be connected to the other side of this resistor and then the collector will go to the cathode of the LED right here and then the anode will go to the power supply which is right around 4 volts. This circuit using DC voltage over here on the negative rail and the positive can also control or switch on and off a 120 volt AC load and it's very simple to modify this in order to do that but I do not recommend doing what I'm about to show you to cycle something on and off at a rapid rate. It would be more for something that would cycle on one minute, maybe off for another, maybe on for three minutes, off for one minute. It would be fine for that because if you do anything more than that, you're going to probably end up burning up the contacts in that relay fairly quickly from cycling it on and off too much. So what you're going to do, if you're operating at 12 volts, you're going to take this pin 3 output, you're going to get rid of everything you see over here, and we're going to be connecting the relay to pin 3. This one right here draws way under 200 milliamps. You want to make sure the voltage matches the power supply. So this is 12 volts DC. Power supply is 12. If you're operating at 6 volts, make sure this is 6 volts. You're going to take a 1N4148 diode. You're going to connect it to one side of the relay coil and the other, the side with the line, the cathode, is going to be connected to pin 3 and the side without the line right over here that's the anode that's going to be connected to battery negative you're going to take the AC load connect it to the center pin right here that's the hot line this side over here is normally open so you're going to make sure that this connection between this terminal and this terminal is off when you measure continuity with no power being applied when power is applied you should have continuity between the center pin and this one here. The hot line AC is going to flow between this pin and that pin, turning on a light, a siren, or a motor. Now if you're going to be using this circuit in a vehicle, you want to make sure that you protect this integrated circuit from transients or high voltage spikes generated from the alternator. So in order to do that, what you're going to do is take a TVS diode, 
transient voltage suppressing diode. Either one of these will work, a P6KE16A or a P6KE18. This is your cathode and this is your anode. You're going to connect it as shown, this point here to the positive rail, this side here to the negative. And what's going to happen if the input voltage starts getting too high between the positive and negative rail, this diode here is going to do its job at absorbing those spikes. Okay, let me give you a quick demonstration. Okay, let me turn on the power supply. Set to 12 volts. And you can see the light's on. It's going to start cycling now. It's about 3 seconds on and 3 seconds off, currently the way it's set. And you can see the current over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the setting right on here. Let me go counterclockwise. See it's flashing faster now. Let me keep going counterclockwise and we'll see if we can make it speed up even more. Let's keep going. Keep in mind, you want to make sure you have a good heat sink on this MOSFET if you're going to be using more than about two and a half amps of current. Let me keep going counterclockwise. And a circuit like this can actually be used if you're making a go-kart or a buggy, you'd like to make your own turning signals. This circuit would easily be able to handle the task of switching all your lights on and off. Now let's go all the way counterclockwise. Let me put it all the way to the right. Whoop, almost fell out, push it down too hard. And you saw how long that stayed off. It's going to stay on a lot longer now. Now it's going to go off for the same length of time. And back on. Now let me switch this over to the higher current of the bulb. This is 5 amps. See over here? Now we're pulling 5 amps. That 555 circuit, no problem at all. Controlling the 5 amp load. And the camera's probably missing a bunch of them, but it does work extremely well. Okay, this is the same. Piezo alarm that's used in my non-lethal rodent trap. It sounds all the time, but if you take the output directly from the 555 to drive this, you get this result right here. No longer a continuous alarm. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.